Hi, in this section we will be exploring how to model systems of connected particles involving pulleys. In order for us to answer some of these types of questions, we will need to make a few fundamental assumptions. Number one, we will need to assume that the string is going to be light. Number two, we will need to assume that the string is inextensible. And number three, we will need to assume that the pulley is going to be smooth. If we assume that the string passing over the pulley is going to be light, then this means that tension in the string is going to remain the same. So tension remains the same. If the string is inextensible, then this means that the acceleration will remain the same. So the acceleration for each particle is the same. And finally, if the pulley is smooth, which means there will be no friction involved, then this also means that the tension in the string will be the same on both sides of the pulley. So the tension will be the same on both sides of the pulley. So let's have a look at an example. Problem number one. So I've cut out a lot of the wording associated with problems like this just to free up a lot of space. But basically we have two particles which are connected by a light inextensible string which passes over a smooth fixed pulley. One of the particles has a mass of 5 kilograms. The other particle has a mass of 3 kilograms. Both particles are initially at rest and are above the ground at a height of 1.5 meters. So what we want to do is initially before we start solving the problem we need to start by writing down any forces on the diagram. So let's have a look at each of the two particles to begin with. So the five kilogram particle will have a weight of 5 G Newtons acting in the downward sense so we'll need to indicate that so this would be 5 G Newtons and similarly for the 3 kilogram particle that also has a weight of 3 G Newtons both of these two particles are connected together by a light inextensible string as such the string is now taut and as a result, there will now be tension in the string. And we can indicate those tensions as such. So, so far, just on these two particles, these are the forces that we have. Now, once the particles are released from rest, what's going to happen? Well, the heavier particle is going to accelerate downwards while the lighter particle will accelerate upwards. In problems like these it's a good idea to indicate the direction of motion. So we said the 5 kilogram particle which is the heavier one will accelerate downwards so we're going to indicate this with an arrow to say it's going to accelerate in the downward sense and the lighter particle will accelerate upwards. So because the string is inextensible, the acceleration or the magnitude of the acceleration for each of these two particles will be the same. 
So because the particles are now going to be in motion, we can now apply Newton's second law. Newton's second law states that the force, the resultant force, will be equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration. Now because both of these two particles are moving in different directions, we will need to set up an equation of motion for each individual particle. So we can do that by initially writing for the 5 kilogram particle, well the resultant force on the 5 kilogram particle is found by looking at the direction in which it's moving. Well it's moving in the downward sense. So the resultant force would be written as 5g newtons minus any forces acting in the opposite direction which is tension. So 5g minus t is our expression for the resultant force F. Well this resultant force F will now be equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration which we currently don't know. So here we have set up one equation however this equation has two unknowns. There's a T tension and A acceleration. In order for us to determine the acceleration and the tension we will need to set up a second equation. We can set up our second equation by looking at the next particle. Now if we focus on the next particle, the 3 kilogram particle is going to accelerate in the upward sense. Well if this particle is going to accelerate in the upward sense, then the resultant force for this particle will be written as T minus 3g. So moving upwards, so we're going to resolve in the upward sense, well, we've got tension acting in the upward sense and opposing this tension we've got its weight 3g. So hence the resultant force F for this particle would be given by T minus 3g and that's going to be equal to the mass which is 3 kilograms times the acceleration A. So here we have two equations, equation number one and equation number two. And what we now need to do is we can solve these two equations to determine the magnitude of the acceleration and hence the magnitude of the tension. Now there are a number of different ways of trying to solve a pair of simultaneous equations. You can choose whichever method you prefer. However, when I'm looking at these two equations here, we can see that we've got a negative coefficient of t in the first equation and a positive coefficient of t in the second equation. Or we can eliminate those simply by adding the two equations together. So, if we add these two equations, tensions would cancel. So negative t plus t, they cancel. 5g plus negative 3g leaves you with 2g. And 5a plus 3a makes 8a. We can now rearrange for a. So hence, therefore, a must be equal to 2g divided by 8. And if you remember, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So 2 multiplied by 9.8 and then divided by 8 gives you a value of 2.45 meters per second squared. So this is our value for the acceleration of this system. To calculate the tension in the string we can use any one of these two equations and rearrange to calculate t. I'm going to use the second equation so we're going to say from number two tension 
minus 3g is equal to 3a. Now remember a is what we've just calculated, that's 2.45 meters per second squared. So that becomes 3 multiplied by 2.45. And we can now simply rearrange to calculate tension. So we can say therefore tension would be equal to of 36.75 newtons. So let's move on to part B of the question. Calculate the speed when the particle hits the floor. So calculate the speed, well which particle is going to hit the floor? Well it's going to be the heavier particle. So the heavier particle is going to strike the floor. So we wish to work out the speed at which the 5 kilogram particle will strike the ground. So, let's list all the information that we know. Well, we know initially the particles were released from rest. So we'll say u is equal to zero. We know they're connected by a light inextensible string. And as a result, the particles were accelerating with a magnitude of 2.45 meters per second squared. So we'll say a is equal to 2.45 meters per second squared. This particle is 1.5 meters above the ground. So we can say its height or its displacement that it will cover when it strikes the ground would be 1.5 meters. And we wish to work out the speed. Speed meaning the final speed. So can we think of an appropriate SUVAT equation which we can use to help us determine the speed? So given u, a, s, and v, we can use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2a s. And now it's just a case of substitution. Why did we use a SUVAT equation here? Well, remember, the constant acceleration formula can be used when we are dealing with constant acceleration. And in this scenario, since these particles are connected together by a light inextensible string, we do have constant acceleration. Part C. Find the force exerted on the pulley by the string. So let's have a look at a diagram close up as to what's actually happening. So we have tension in the string on either side of the pulley. And both of these two tensions are equal in magnitude. However, the pulley is fixed, it doesn't move. In other words, we will say that the pulley is in equilibrium. For the pulley to remain in equilibrium, it needs to be a force acting in the upward sense to ensure it remains fixed, to ensure it remains in equilibrium. So the force acting on the pulley is this R value that we need to determine. And we can determine that by resolving. So R is what we're searching for, minus 2T, and these are the two forces acting opposite to R. We can say R minus 2T is equal to zero. And now we can rearrange to calculate R. So we can say R is equal to 2T, Remember earlier, we've calculated the value for t, 
our value for t is 36.75 newtons. So we can say therefore r is equal to 2 multiplied by 36.75. And using your calculator, you can verify that 36.75 multiplied by 2 will give you an r value of 73.5 newtons. Now this problem is very similar to the first one. Okay, so let's have a look at the diagram. So in this case, we've got two particles, a lighter particle, one kilogram, which is currently resting on the ground. We've got a heavier particle, which is three kilograms, which is 40 centimeters above the ground. Currently the particles are held at rest. They will be released from rest and our goal would be to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration after they have been released from rest. And we can do that by forming two equations of motion like we did before. And before we create the two equations of motion, we need to add some details to our diagram. We need to add the forces on our diagram. So both of these two particles are connected together by a light inextensible string. So the string is going to be taut. So therefore we will have tension in the string. We will also have the weight of each particle acting in the downward sense. So for the particle on the right side, that's given by 3g newtons. And on the left side, 1g or just g newtons. We also need to include the direction of motion for each particle. So in this scenario what's going to happen? Well similar to before the heavier particle will move in the downward sense so we can indicate that with an arrow to say that the heavier particle is going to move in the downward sense. As a result, the lighter particle will move in the upward sense. And we can indicate that with the letter A. Now remember, they're both connected by a light inextensible string. So as such, the tension on either side of the pulley will remain the same. And also, both objects will accelerate at the same magnitude. So from this diagram, we can now determine our two equations of motion. So let's focus on the one kilogram particle. So let's just write it in so we can communicate this with the reader. The one kilogram particle is going to move upwards. So we're going to take tension, but we're going to subtract any opposing forces, which is going to be its weight. So therefore, the resultant force will be given by T minus 1G and that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration 1 times A which is just A. And we're going to label this one as number 1. Let's now focus on the heavier particle. Now the heavier particle is going to move downwards. So what do we have acting downwards? Well, we have the weight acting downwards, which is 3g minus any opposing forces, which is tension. So we're going to have 3g minus t is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is going to be 3a. And we'll label this as equation number two. So similar to before, we need to solve this pair of simultaneous equations. We're going to complete this using the same method as before. We've got tension, positive, negative tension. They can cancel quite easily by adding the two equations together. And the result of adding these two equations, what do we end up with? Well, 3g minus 1g gives you 2g. Negative t and positive t, they will cancel. And then we've got 3a plus a, which results in 4a. So from here, therefore, we can say acceleration is equal to 2g divided by 4. And 2g divided by 4 works out to be 4.9 meters per second squared. 
So this is the value for our acceleration. In this question, it doesn't ask you to calculate tension. However, if you wanted to calculate tension, similar to the previous question, you can take your A value and you can substitute into either equation number one or equation number two to determine the value of tension. Okay, let's move on to part B of the question. After the three kilogram particle hits the ground, the one kilogram particle continues to move and the string is now slack. Let's focus on this word slack. What does that mean? Slack basically means that there is no tension in the string anymore. In other words, the string is now like such. What we need to do is we need to determine the maximum height above the ground reached by the one kilogram particle. So let's explore what's actually going to happen in this particular problem. So the heavier particle will travel downwards or accelerate downwards. It will cover a distance of 40 centimeters before it strikes the ground. As the heavier particle moves down 40 centimeters, the lighter particle also moves up 40 centimeters. So let's just draw a little diagram so that we can remind ourselves of exactly what's going on. So currently, we've got the lighter particle on the ground. Eventually, it rises by 40 centimeters. Let's just indicate that. Okay, so it's moved up 40 centimeters. But though it says in the question that the one kilogram particle will continue to move and the string is now slack. So the one kilogram particle will continue to rise upwards when the string is now slack. And we'll just indicate it as such. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to work out this additional distance, which I'm going to label h. And therefore, the total height, the maximum height above the ground would be 40 centimeters plus this additional distance h that this particle had to rise by. So how do we go about trying to calculate this value for h? Well, in order for us to determine the value for h, we need to know what was the speed of the particle as it had risen 40 centimeters. So we need to know the speed at this point. So to calculate the speed at this point, we can use our constant acceleration formulae. In order for you to determine the speed at this point, we're going to have a look at the heavier particle. Now, if the heavier particle is traveling at a certain speed, since they're connected together by the same string, the lighter particle will also be traveling at that same speed. So if we focus on the three kilogram particle, we know initially the particle was at rest. Once it was released from rest, it began to accelerate at 4.9 meters per second squared. We know it covered a distance of 40 centimeters. So we'll say S is equal to, now we've got to be a little bit careful here. The acceleration is given in meters per second squared. So 40 centimeters is just the same as 0.4 meters. And we need to determine the speed that the particle hit the ground. 
So to calculate the speed at which the particle hits the ground, we can use a constant acceleration formula. V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. So we'll say V squared is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 4.9 times 0 0.4. So the speed at which the particle, the heavier particle, hits the ground is at 1.98 meters per second. So let's go back to the diagram. The lighter particle was initially at the ground. It had risen by 40 centimeters, while the heavy one dropped 40 centimeters. The heavy one struck the ground at 1.98 meters per second. So the lighter particle at that exact moment also had a speed of 1.98 meters per second. That's a fundamental calculation that we need to answer the next part of this problem. So we now want to determine that during the second phase, when the string is now slack, what this height is going to be, this additional distance that this particle has now have to travel up. So, how do we calculate that? Well, let's have a look. Its initial speed at that point is now 1.98 meters per second. It had to rise to this point where its final speed would be zero. When an object reaches maximum height, its final velocity at the top has to be zero. So we can now say the velocity, final velocity, has to be zero. Now we're searching for this additional distance h, so we'll say s is equal to h, but we also need one other quantity. What is this final quantity? Well, you see the time, well, it's either acceleration. We don't have the time, so the time it takes to go from this point to this point, we do not have that information. And we can't use our value for acceleration that we calculated previously, because at that point, there was tension in the string and the strings were taut. Well, at this stage, the string is not taut, it is now slack. When the string is now slack, the object is now going to be in free fall. So therefore, we will need to use acceleration to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's copy that value in. So A is negative 9.8. And we can now use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Okay, so let's go back to the diagram. So initially, particle was on the ground, it had risen 40 centimeters till it reached this particular point. The string then became slack and it had risen by a further 0.2 centimeters. Sorry, meters. So the question says calculate the maximum height above the ground so we can say therefore the maximum height above the ground would be 40 centimeters which is 0.4 meters plus 0.2 meters which becomes 0.6 meters 
So thanks for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you have developed a better understanding in tackling these types of problems. The next tutorial we'd cover further problems to do with pulley systems. So please ensure you check out the next video. See you next time.